Hey guys, welcome back to Sip and Dip with Chelsea. During today's video, we're going to be covering the do's and don'ts of why your dip powder nails might be cracking and chipping. I am going to be covering a lot of ground in this video. I will talk about why you might be experiencing cracking and chipping, how to prevent it with this type of nail shape, so a rounded almond. I'm going to also show you some tips and tricks if you have square shaped nails. We're going to talk about gel top coats and why they might be peeling dip powder liquid top coats, and tips and tricks of everything in between. So my nails are prepped, they are ready, let's go dive in. I grabbed this base liquid from Dip Nailed It, I've really been enjoying it. It has a beautiful round brush inside which makes application so seamless, but it has a thin consistency and a faster dry time, which makes it really nice when you're building up these layers and strength. I'll be using Revel Nails shade Erica. I just love the shade. It is my go-to staple. So tip number one is going to be about building up strength. Sometimes our dip powder manicures are too thin for our lifestyle and they will flex and bend, which would create a crack. So to prevent this, we need to build up an apex on our nails. With this particular nail shape, I would be most likely to have it bend or flex right here at the free edge where I have the most surface space. So I want to build up strength in the center of my nail. You can see I have a nice arch without it being too bulky at my cuticle area. So to start, I like to remove as much product off of my brush as possible. This is just how little I use. Then I do one small swipe down the center of my nail. I go about halfway back towards my cuticle area and that is it. That is our first layer. So I follow those same steps and I do one small stripe down the center of my nail on each of the nails and let that layer dry. Once they're dry, I scrub everything off with a stiff scrub brush. For my second layer, I'm going to go just a little bit further back towards my cuticle area and a little bit more on the sides. This is how I protect the most susceptible part of my nail of where it might crack or bend and chip. So as you can see, that's about two layers on just the tips of my nails without it being too bulky at my cuticle area. But now they will be less likely to bend and move. I think this dip powder base liquid is perfect for building an apex because like I mentioned, it is a thinner consistency, but it is a faster dry time. So I don't have to wait for my layers to dry before I can move on. Now that they're dry, I'm just scrubbing off the excess powder. Layer number three will be a full dip coverage. So I'm going to paint the base liquid across the entire nail, making sure I do not get this on my skin and getting all the way over to those sidewall areas. This is where it's so important to make sure you're getting the base liquid all the way to that free edge. That is what is going to protect the free edge from bending and moving. I know so many that struggle with cracking and breaking and it can be extremely frustrating. And as much as I hate to say to add more dip powder layers to your nails, sometimes y'all, that's what we need. We need more strength. So building up an apex gradually is a really great alternative to avoiding that bulky nail look, but still having the strength where you need it, which is the free edge area. Okay, layer number three is done and we're gonna scrub everything off. Layer number four will be another full dip coverage. So I'm applying the base liquid across the entire nail. I am speeding this up so I don't bore y'all to death. And we're gonna make sure we don't get this on our skin, get all the way to that free edge area and dip into the powder. So I follow those same steps for the rest of my nails. I'm gonna show you one more example and then do the rest off camera to save on time. So I finished up doing another layer on the rest of the nails. I am scrubbing them all off and now let's talk about clear dip powder. So now that I'm done with my color, I'm gonna do a full layer of clear dip powder off camera. This is going to protect them when we go to file shape and buff. 
So I am all done doing a layer of clear on all of my nails. Now let's go talk about a square nail shape apex. Square shaped nails are known for cracking and chipping because they have a larger surface area, which makes them more susceptible to bending and flexing. So depending on your lifestyle, it can be as simple as just the wrong nail shape for you. If you're really, really frustrated with how much your nails have been cracking and breaking, especially those little corner areas, maybe it's time to try out a new nail shape. But if you absolutely love that nail shape, then I'm going to show you how we can build up some more strength to prevent that. So what's different about this apex building than what I just showed you with my nail shape is that we're going to go all the way to these sidewall areas. Rather than just focusing in the center, we're going to start on the sidewall with our first layer and work our way back. With those corners of our nails being the most susceptible to bending and breaking, that is where I want to focus building up strength without building up bulk at my cuticle. So I apply the base liquid all the way to the sidewall and of course make sure you're not getting this on your skin and get the base all the way to those free edge corner areas. Dipping into the powder, this is our first layer. The second layer, we're gonna go all the way to the sidewall again, but just a little bit further back towards the cuticle area and then dip into the powder. The third layer will be a full dip coverage. So pretend I'm going all the way back to my cuticle area and also of course, all the way to the sidewall and dipping into the powder. This fourth layer will be a full dip layer and also your last layer of color. If you notice what I've been doing with these two different types of apexes is I'm focusing on where I need strength based on my nail shape and lifestyle. So with a square nail shape, we really wanna build up strength at our free edge corner areas. So at this point we are done with our color and we're gonna do a layer of clear on top. So I'm gonna do that off camera real quick. Okay, so I am done with my encapsulating layer and you can see the bulk of the product is at the free edge here where I need the most protection and it's not too bulky at my cuticle. Tip number two is as simple as applying more activator. So what can happen sometimes is the activator doesn't properly seep through all of the dip powder product on your nail. So by doing just one layer, you might not have enough activator to harden all of the product. So as you'll see here, I'm going in for that second layer to make sure the activator properly hardens all of the dip powder on my nails. After two minutes have passed, then I can begin shaping. So I grab my 100 slash 180 grit nail file. I like to use the 180 grit side and start on my free edge first. Now I'm going to go around my sidewall and cuticle area to make sure that I don't have any lumps, any bumps from where I built up the layers and also cut down any bulk. As you can see here, I have made sure I don't have any ledge at my cuticle and that the sidewalls aren't too bulky and thick. And what I want you to remember is I do not want to cut down on the bulk and the center of my nail. I want that there. I want the strength, but I do not want any ridges or lumps from where I did my layers. So I do use the 180 grit side on the entire top surface just to make sure that there aren't any ridges. Once I'm happy with it, then I buff the entire nail smooth. I would follow these same steps if I had a square nail shape, just focusing on where I wanna keep my strength and making sure I don't have any ridges from building up layers. So we can't talk about cracking and chipping without talking about top coats. So I'm gonna use some rubbing alcohol here to cleanse my nails after filing and shaping because I will be applying a gel top coat on top of them. Gel products love a rough surface to grab onto, and as you might remember, I buffed my nail smooth. So what can happen sometimes is when we apply a gel top coat right on a smooth dip powder nail, it will peel or crack off. So we need to create a rough or maybe sticky surface. So what I'm doing is applying a gel base on top of my nail, and then I'm going to cure it for 60 seconds. This is going to give my gel top coat something to grab 
onto. And it's also an extra layer of strength on top of my dip powder nails. Once I'm done with all of the nails, then I do a full 60 second cure. Now it's time for top coat. So I'll also be using Madame Glam's gel top coat. I love this one because it's HEMA free. It has a phenomenal shine. And as you might have noticed, something weird is I have matching hands. So I did this manicure for my 10 year anniversary trip and it held up great. I was in the jacuzzi, I was in chlorine, I had sunscreen all over my hands and I didn't have any issues with discoloration, with cracking, with chipping, with peeling. It held up phenomenal and it has such a high shine even today. So once I'm happy with it, then I like to flip my hand over and let that gel settle. So this will help it still have that pretty arch on my nail and I cure for 60 seconds when I'm done. So I'm applying my last layer of activator on my swatch stick and I'm gonna let this dry for two minutes. So this Sparkling Co. Glossy Coat 2.0 is definitely one of my holy grail top coats. It's phenomenal. It has that super high shine. So for your first layer, you only need to do three quick strokes on the nail. That is it. The second layer is going to be more precise. So you'll see here, I am getting all the way over to those sidewall areas, making sure I really focus on the free edge. That is where I want to seal in all of the product and protect it. So cap off that free edge and seal it all in. So when we're doing our top coat, we need to think of it as one more layer of strength and protection. So focusing on that free edge corner, anywhere that you are experiencing that cracking and chipping of where your nail is flexing, that's what we want to do. And as you can see, I'm just comparing the shine of it. They're both phenomenal and such high shine products. So now how do we know if it's our top coat cracking or our dip powder? I recruited my husband to bend this swatch stick so I could show y'all a crack in the nail. And I only did two dips of Erica on this swatch. And as you can see, that was not enough strength for the bending. So how do we know if it's our top coat or if it's the dip powder that's cracking? The fastest and simplest way if this happens to you is to grab a nail file and file off the top coat. I'm going to use the 100 grit side and I'm going to file down just the top coat layer. So you can see here that the crack is all the way down to the dip powder. It has gone through the top coat and down into the dip powder, which tells me I need more dip powder strength, that my top coat is not the issue and I need to be adding more strength depending on where that crack is and my nail shape and my lifestyle. All right, y'all, that is it for today's do's and don'ts episode on cracking and chipping. It can be as simple as just adding more strength where you need it, depending on your nail shape and lifestyle. I hope that y'all found this video helpful. Feel free to leave more questions or anything else that you're struggling with down in the comments. Thank y'all so much for coming and hanging out with me today. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day, and I will see you in the next video.